Let's watch Willy's Mage video. Boys, when I hit play, you hit Pog. I wanted to watch this yesterday, but we haven't had time. We've seen his Druid, Rogue, and... Uh, Paladin video, I think? These videos are talking about how the classes change or get better in TBC. So, let's play this. Mage is the topic today. Three, two, one. We're good. Mage, in Burning Crusade. Advanced audio. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. With TBC confirmed, it's about time we Sorry did a little bit of a class update. Let's take a look back at each class in the Burning Crusade, their performance overall, and hopefully help you make your choice moving forwards. We will be looking okay. at what's new in terms of talents and abilities, leveling, PvE, mm -hmm. who's the new king of the meter, PvP has much changed, and tier sets which actually exist for every specialization now. And through this, I hope to Ooh. answer, is your class any better now tbc tier sets dude stay safe can you pause for a second i need to go shit poop in your pants here we go oh boy i've waited so long to go through the dark portal looking for guild hey over here we've been having issues finding a good mage really in fact we have raid tonight we'll see you there sounds great do you want to know why it's because there are no good mages Okay, everyone, Doesn't welcome exist. Jimmy. He's the new mage for tonight. Could you just make us a table real quick and buff groups two and three? No problem. Wonderful, that's perfect. So this is progression. We'll have you on standby. We're probably going to need some more food and water later. You can make them whilst you wait here. That'll keep you busy. I, uh, sure, okay then. Okay, guys, great job tonight. We'll clear this all up on Sunday. Don't be late. Oh, hey, Jimmy, nearly forgot about you there. Do you think I might be able to? Join in on the next raid. Jimmy, nope. Jimmy, Jimmy. Do you remember just a few months ago in Classic what you did to the economy uh, in the game? The forum posts that you made about people not being able to afford their consumables? How if it Lol, how can these casual dads not afford raid consumes? Takes like one hour max for two weeks of consumes for me, easy. Bunch of casual, learn to play the game, LMFAO. Wasn't your ignite, you would yell for yep. it to be dropped. So what I'm Very going to need you to do now is be quiet. Get a portal made for used to be Fury and stop complaining. We've got half a dozen of you waiting to trial at the moment. So don't let your arcane powder and portal room game true. slip up, kiddo. Oh my god. And through the portal today is one of the most played classes by far throughout the duration of Classic. With free food and water, teleports to major cities, portals, <laughs> the best AoE by far, the best gold farmer, the best booster, the fastest mm -hmm. solo leveler, the best caster DPS, one of the best PvPers. This class quite literally does not have a weak point. Well, apart from the mana bar, I suppose. And did you know back in the vanilla beta, mages even had a spell called Cadgar's Unlocking because Blizzard couldn't True. bear the thought that another class would be better at them than something, or well, anything for that matter. Mages were treated like true kings throughout vanilla, and for classic half 1.12 release made them even better than they would have been back in the day. That is one sheer legacy to live up to. But the higher you climb, the farther you have to fall. And to some extent... Do you think mages are more... Are mages the single most OP class in Classic? I know you're gonna say, what about warriors, stay safe? I don't know, like... Warriors are really super good because of world buffs, right? You take away their world buffs, they're not nearly as good. And world buffs are obviously unintentional, right? But ma like, mage class design, mages. Mages are just straight up, unassisted, all natural, OP as fuck in every way, pretty much, in Classic. Extent, the rug was pulled out from under the mage's feet in TBC, and they fell down somewhat in power levels. Is the class dead then? Rerolled to a OP. better caster? The time of the mage finally over? Far from it. In fact, I think mages have some potential to be a lot better than many people are giving them credit for. Let's see how the mage changed in TBC. What new toys does the mage get baseline then? Some very solid ones, that's what. Invisibility, a gradual threat reduction effect that mages were so far missing, fading over 5 seconds. Invisibility is one of those spells that's never really changed all that much throughout WoW's duration. If you've ever played a mage, you probably understand exactly how it will work. It's in its own category apart from <laughs> stealth, and you get a screen effect that's ever so reminiscent of Lord of the Rings. 
mage table or ritual of refreshment as it's properly called i'm sure you'll be relieved to hear is brought in for tbc though yeah. in a later patch thank god this for stuff does like need this. you to get hold of the new ranks of food and water in tbc2 both of which are random dungeon drops though with a volume of more importantly they add the cookie jar warlocks don't have to make hellstones for every single person in the entire raid you summon the fucking cookie jar, and people pick their cookies out of it. Oh, Players plowing through them, they shouldn't be That's able to rare, assuming they're in at launch, of course. <clears throat> also, the table has 50 charges with a 5-minute cooldown, so ration it. Also, there is a new rank of Mana Gem 2. Spell Steal does what it says on the tin, steals a spell, or more specifically, Makes one sense. beneficial magical buff from an enemy. Pretty costly to cast, this is used in all areas of content, really taking cooldowns or heals in pvp used to take a few so i don't think this is 20 percent of base mana is it is it actually i think he's using a tooltip from like modern wowhead or something where it's like kind of buggy is it actually 20 percent? i don't remember that it actually is okay cooldowns or heals in pvp used to take a few extremely powerful buffs in pve oh no it like isn't okay yeah that's what i thought that's what i thought ZA, if anyone remembers that one 30 seconds of mega hyper heroism there's a lot of fun to be had with this spell and it's one that's caused a few headaches in design space at blizzard 2 over the years spell steal is even used for the mage to tank in some raid encounters as well yep true. and last but not least for the arcane tree is arcane blast the so this guy here dr boom because there are no target dummies in tbc to test your dps what would you do you'd land on your flying mount you'd fly up here you'd land on this rock back here as a caster at least and you would sit here and pump dr boom and he wouldn't die and like he, he couldn't attack you and so i would fly out here on my mage and my warlock and fly here and just dps him to test my rotation to test how much dps i did the this he, like, spell he was actually the target makes dummy. arcane into a real strong independent dps tree that don't need no help from fire or frost arcane missiles just never really cut it as a proper damage spell though arcane blast though blast very much does and we'll be talking more about this it's it is 20 percent of base literally all of us agree and one dude says it's not and you agree lmao okay all right 2.4.3 database i am pulling up the database boys let me check because i don't know spell steel where is it what's it called spell what's it called ah uh, da, da, da. uncategorized spells what, what's it called spell Counterspell, one word, spell, steal. Huh? That's what I was trying to tell you, man. I I told you it's 20% the base mana. And you were like, ah, no, it's like 448 mana or something like that. That's what I was trying to fucking tell you, dumbass. And then you were like, ah, no, it's this and that. Like, you just gotta listen to me. You just gotta pay attention, okay? The spell when we get it's into just PvE. Try to pay Molten try to keep armor up. was added. This is your new go-to PvE yeah, buff armor. It's some extra crit, no brainer really. Also, in a later patch, mage armors were made undispellable, which is really nice, mainly for PvP. And then we have Ice Lance, the other side of ah, the shatter combo that you probably know was missing from Ice Classic. Lance. Now you can shatter from miles away instead of having uh -huh. to be a bit more up close and personal with Cone of Cold or Fire Blast. More or less only ever used in PvP due to the nature of Frost Nova effects breaking quickly in dungeons or mob the streamer is never wrong. Yeah, it's true. Like, imagine why would you say something wrong on stream then all your all of your viewers would just think you're fucking stupid so i'm not i'm not gonna on my stream say something that's wrong because then everyone would think i'm just a dumbass so i'm like trust me i'm only ever gonna say something that's right and i'm never gonna say anything that's wrong okay Mobs just being straight up immune just trust in me. raids on to leveling them so mages are pretty yep. infamous for their ability to aoe grind mm -hmm. efficiently in classic mm. and for tbc i'm sure the latest and greatest <laughs> aoe spots will be mapped out in the open world pretty quickly or that dungeon grinds may just be now the go-to and you may have indeed heard regarding aoe that warlocks are the new kings of it because of seed of corruption but it's they good. don't get that to level 70. Mages, though, keep the AoE they get in oh. vanilla and get some new additional toys on top of that between level 60 and 70, be it from their baseline spells or new talents. But I guess with all this talk of leveling and AoE, it's time to bring up... Dude, they should make it in TBC. Like, this is something that they should change. They're doing some changes. They should make it. So when your Seed of Corruption explodes, it applies every curse on every target that gets hit by it and also corruption so so imagine seed of corruption explodes 
and then everything it touches gets hit by corruption. It applies corruption on them. It applies Curse of Agony. It applies Curse of Doom. It applies Curse of Elements. It applies Curse of Exhaustion. It would it applies Immolate also. Uh, dude, that would be fucking sick. Dude. And then it also applies another Seed of Corruption. So it's just, it's just gonna keep on exploding. Oh, dude, yeah, that would be... And then also, when Seed of Corruption explodes, it sends out Shadow Bolts to everything that it hits. Oh, yeah, they should do that, yeah. The AoE cap. Unstable this affliction. This is a yeah. huge yeah, yeah. change that especially affects the mage's power level. In vanilla and all the way up to patch 2.2 in the Burning Crusade, area of effect scaled up infinitely. As long as you can live, you can pull any number of mobs and you will be fine. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we've all seen videos or examples of mages pulling over 300 mobs inside Maradon and AoEing them all down, but by a later stage of TBC, Blizzard started to take notice and they put a pretty swift stop to it. So all AoE spells Welcome. got a hard damage cap. Apart from effects that persist on the ground, think like Consecration, say hello to your new boosting overlords by the way, or the periodic debuff from Flamestrike. Here is an archive post of a player testing in TBC as of patch 2.4.1. As for numbers on Blizzard's TBC, I'm sure we will know once we have the beta. The cap Ooh. was set to 10 mobs maximum, but that doesn't mean you couldn't go over the damage threshold cap at a lower volume of mobs if you have some kind of buff active and your spells are just hitting hard enough. So let's take an example number lower than these cap just for the sake of simplicity and say Arcane Explosion is capped at 1000 damage. So you press Arcane okay. Explosion, it does 100 damage to all 10 mobs, not counting crits. Simple. Okay. Once you add an 11th mob to the pack though, you are over the possible damage cap for the number of mobs you are hitting. Oh God. So instead Yo, Gekka, of 100 per 10, you. it's now 90 per 11. 15 mobs, it would be 66. 20, it would be about 50. Ooh. Also, spell damage and bonus effects do not raise the damage cap. So as your gear gets better, you are actually just hitting the cap earlier. This means what we see at the moment with mages pulling literally infinite amounts of mobs and being able to take them all down slowly will no longer be a thing. Mm -hmm. Does it totally kill off their AoE though? Well, not entirely. Mages just need some help now. Whilst their actual AoE was capped, the effects that enabled these mass pulls were not. Those being things like permafrost and improved blizzard. And remember, if you aren't hitting the mob cap or the damage cap, mage AoE is still extremely powerful. Don't sleep on it. Oh, and also AoE caps are static per spell rank too, so you can't cheat the system. Let's move on to PvE then. Okay. Now this is an area okay. where mages get quite a lot of negative press, as other ranged classes perform more consistently throughout the duration of the expansion. And your ideal raid comp has a lot of slots for classes that bring very valuable buffs or debuffs. Can the mage offer something like that then? Well, you have your arcane intellect, of course, as your food and water. Those are more out of combat benefits, though. So what JC? else do we have then? We've got spell steal. On certain fights, mages spell steal a very powerful buff from an enemy, on like Morgar, spell yep. shield on High King Morgar, or dampen magic on the Illidari Council to allow them to effectively tank the boss. Mages are amazing in dungeons too, with their toolkit of hard CC, interrupts, slows, and AoE damage. When it comes to raid content, though, they are the pure D. Okay. You know how everyone has memories of TBC Heroics where you actually have to use Polymorph and you're doing Hunter Traps, like you're actually CCing the mobs? Are we gonna get into classic TBC and you're never gonna AoE anything and you just run in there and slap your fucking dick out and AoE everything down again? Are we gonna actually have to fucking CC? Like, I, I, I doubt it, man. Like, I, I doubt it. It's just gonna be a fucking AoE cleave fest again. DPS class you would expect, and that is- I'll tell you this! Says TV I'll TV. tell you this! And I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to mention it again. Come TBC. We're going to start this in phase one of TBC. On this channel here, you have my word. We are doing, I will be hosting, I don't know, maybe once a month, a five-man heroic speedrun competition. We're going to be doing it here. Five-man heroic speedrun dungeon competitions. I think it's going to be super, and it's going to have like a league and brackets. It's going to be badass what they offer. No one else is no really way, benefiting yes, from way, Winter's pog. chill. Yes, way. Warlocks would want to mage about if they end up playing fire spec at any point due to improved scorch, but that's really about it. The vast majority of the time, what you bring is DPS, which isn't bad, nor is it the best. Well, unless you get help with a certain spec, 
and gear combo, which we will talk about in a moment. Mm. One thing I really did notice when researching the mage for TBC is there is such a huge variance in person to person's preference for what is the best talent setup, and that you can really make an argument for playing all three specs at different points throughout the expansion. This is really a luxury you may not appreciate for so many other specs out there, there's just a bunch of mandatory talents and very little wiggle room. For the mage, it's surprisingly flexible in the number of different approaches they have, and I think that's a really good place to be. So let's take a look at some specs, and I'll cover what's new in the various talent trees as well. Frost can definitely be a great startup spec in tier 4. For leveling, it's amazing, and getting stuck into early level endgame. Very importantly too, mages get ice block baseline as of a later patch in TBC, on top of this, when you use Ice Block, now you get a debuff called Hyperthermia, preventing another one from being used for 30 seconds, which is more of a PvP thing. But I just thought I'd mention it here. The back-to-back -back mm -hmm. blocks are gone. The Cold Snap God, has been yes. moved down to where Ice Block used to be, and you get a new spell called Icy Veins, which in its final iteration in TBC is 20% spell haste and immunity to spell pushback, making this a great new DPS cooldown for all mage specs. And yes, Cold Snap does reset its cooldown. This was a real game changer for Mage PvE DPS back in TBC and made Frost into much more of an appealing support tree for Arcane and Fire. Here's an example tree getting started and Frost in its own right isn't half bad, you know. This is a bit more of a greedy spec though. If people hear Frost, they're very likely going to be expecting at least an improved Blizzard. New talents like Arctic Winds, Empowered Frostbolt and the End of Talent Tree, Water Elemental, being a very powerful 45 second duration summon, which you probably largely associate with PvP, but its damage on its own isn't half bad either. Make sure you make a simple macro for the freeze as well, so you can get a ranged Frost Nova. There's also a more mana efficiency focused fire spec for early game content, which brings tons of AoE, Blast Wave, Dragon's Breath, Lame Strike, Arcane true. Explosion. The Mage gets a mage massive AoE like toolkit, so it is pretty mana hungry and it's missing Icy Veins to keep up on single target. Though with Tier 4, Dungeon Spam and Kara, the spec will put up some respectable damage for all that AoE you're going to be encountering. Which brings us to Arcane that I've been hyping up so far. Let's pull a tree up straight away. We're getting all the beefy buffs from this tree, such as Arcane Potency. Dude, you know what they should do is during pre-patch have free respects. Just for like the month or a month and a half long pre-patch, let us respec as much as we want and try out all the new talents. That would be so cool. Mind mastery and spell power. That would be we then have our set of cooldowns being arcane power, icy <laughs> veins, a reset for icy veins through cold snap, stack of a trinket and a heroism, and I think you see where this is going. This spec, however, is entirely reliant on you having the tier 5 2 set bonus, which grants arcane blast a bonus 20% damage and mana cost. When Arcane Blast is cast, it's actually stacking up a debuff on you that goes to three times, a max stack mm. costing an extra 225% mana, but it reduces its spell cast time down by up to a second. Real quick, dude, I gotta point this out. TBC gear is so fucking good. There's so many awesome sets with cool, interesting, unique set bonuses that super change your gameplay plus sockets, plus socket bonuses, plus meta gems on your helmet that require certain socket colors on your other pieces of gear. Like, dude, T TBC gear is just so fucking good, man. A debuff on you that goes to three times, a max stack costing an extra 225% mana, but it reduces its spell cast time down by up to a second, so 1.5 seconds baseline. Arcane power on top of this is another 30% extra mana cost. That is one expensive spell for a class with a limited mana pool. And the mage can't keep this level of DPS blasting up without some help. On longer fights, you can play a more conservative rotation of... Does tier 4 gear drop from bosses or is it a quest type thing like 2.5 and 3? No, nah, it just drops from bosses. So each boss... Well, the bosses that do drop tokens are going to drop two tokens. I think in later TVC, they made uh, 25 man bosses drop three tokens. I think, but in early TBC they dropped two, so maybe that's kind of up in the air. But um, it's either two or three tokens. It's gonna. We're not positive. I guess we'll find out. Maybe, maybe on beta. Probably not on beta. I doubt they let us do raid testing on the beta. But anyway, no. It drops a token, and you turn it in, and um, it uh, it's still like you know each token has uh, it, it can go to like three or four classes per token. So it'll be like mage, hunter, druid, warlock token, for example, right? And then you can turn it in, and there's actually a tier set for each each uh, spec. So if you get a Paladin token, you can get Prod Gear, Holy Gear, or Red Gear. So it's very, very nice. Three Arcane Blasts, 
and then just Frostbolt till the debuff Very drops nice. and then three more and repeat the cycle. On shorter fights though, and fights just maybe a lot shorter than expected in TBC, yes. this could be a real contender for top hey, DPS from the moments mages can get their hands on the tier 5 2 set. However, and this is the caveat, you must be willing to commit resources to the mage. You can't just stack arcane mages like you can with other classes because they'll just run themselves at Oom in no time at all. They will want to be grouped with a shadow priest to benefit from vampiric touch. They will want your druids innovate ideally. You want to swap in a resto shaman to the group to drop a mana tide when the time is right. And of course your own mana potions mm. and mana gems as personal consumables. I'd keep an eye on Arcanes once tier 5's out, I think they're going to be a real top performer in shorter fights. And just to give it a mention, your end of tree ability, slow. It's actually really powerful combining a casting move speed and ranged attack, slow. Unfortunately, it just doesn't really tend to see much play in practice, being dispellable. Which leaves us with Fire, the DPS spec you know and love from Classic. First things first, rolling Ignite is dead. Each mage gets their own Ignite debuff, so no more building That's the bonfires, I'm afraid. That's the good, good news for TBC, though, is if you like firing off them balls, the spec still does great. It needs a bit more gear to really get going, though, but by Tier 5, and especially with the Tier 6 4 set, this spec can do some very respectable damage, whilst not needing all the extra attention Arcanes do to really get results. Looking at our talents again, we see that Icy Veins is being taken for that extra DPS cooldown. We don't have the points to spare to get that reset on Cold Snap though. This spec also allows you to bring Permafrost and Improved Blizzard, which could be helpful on locking down AoE packs in certain encounters. It's some great utility that shouldn't be overlooked. This spec will get better the deeper we go into the expansion. You no longer have world buffs to really pump up and cheat out more crit chance than you should have had. I suppose that's the story for Fire Mages for many Good. expansions to come though. Other than that, the spec is very similar to what you play in Dude Classic. Dude can play. Scorch up I appreciate it, man. Fire Thank away. you. New talents include things like playing with fire, pyromaniac, also. and a decent little execute type effect from Molten Fury. I suppose I should mention Empowered Fireball too. Pretty much every spec in the game has something along this line at the bottom of the tree, just so they scale as you get more gear. I know it's a very impactful thing, it's just everyone has it and it's not really the most exciting to constantly point out. So that's enough on PvE. I'd say they aren't half bad, you know. And if you are a mage at the moment, I'd start being extra nice to PvP your druids to that innovate. It'll pay off, trust me. Which means it's time to talk PvP. Mage is such an unbelievably stacked class when it comes to household PvP names from back in the day. Your Verni, Gang King, No One. Mages make up part of the holy trinity of the Rogue Mage Priest, one of the most consistently high rated <laughs> arena comps, well, ever to be honest. And this comp has more or less always seen some play just because of the level of synergy between the classes. But before we get into the serious business frost stuff, how Especially about Pompyra though? This is some homebrew spec I just popped together. It's pretty similar to what works in Classic, but now we have even bigger crits thanks to spell power, as well as being able to fit more talents in, that should increase your burst a little more. Let's just say when people aren't running much resilience in Season 1, the meme may see some play after all. Frost though is what you will be seeing the vast majority of the time when it comes to mages in PvP. Like the other mage specs we've looked at, this one is also a little bit flexible with points being moved around with preference, that being in the arcane tree to make sure those polys and CS are hitting, or for more resist for the mage. There's also some wiggle room in the frost tree on winter's chill, and arctic winds, as you prefer really. What's the deal with improved- Dude, I gotta say, like, as we get closer and closer to TBC, I think I'm more excited, as like a singular, uh, like, aspect of the game, I think I'm more excited for TBC Arena than I was for any single aspect of Classic WoW. Like, TBC Arena and TBC PvP and the whole gearing process and doing BGs and getting the marks and getting the honor and then doing Arena and getting the honor points or getting the Arena points, getting the gear... Oh, dude. Oh, it's just so fun, man. I, I am so fucking excited. I am so excited, dude. The Blizzard, though, we're trying to PvP, not do a Mara Wampel here. Well, and it works like this in Classic 2, by the way. For some reason, this isn't a magic debuff, so it's more or less a guaranteed so slow. Poggers. And Blast Wave works like that too, as far as I know. That's just a feature of the game, I guess. In a later patch in TBC, and this was an across-the-board change made to hard CC, Polymorph was cut down to a 10-second duration max, and of course it's still subject to diminishing returns, where it would last half as long upon recast. So you can't Polymorph someone for about one minute anymore. 
thankfully. But mages gained even more cooldowns into their already cooldown heavy base kit to make them sort of like a caster equivalent of a rogue. Icy Veins, Ice Block, Ice Barrier, Water Elemental, and then they can reset everything they do with a Cold Snap, a class yep. that can absolutely pile on a ton of pressure through their instant cast now including freeze from their water elemental ice lance for bigger shatter combos and don't forget spell stealing valuable buffs Ooh, either like heroism or oil, rings poggers. or the polymorph openers from invisibility letting you engage more or less on your terms i would expect to see a lot of mages at high ranks in all arena brackets but you do most frequently see them a even though i feel like i'm decent at pvp i feel like i'm in for rude awakening yeah like that that's how i feel also i feel exactly the same way yes like TBC Arena is going to be so incredibly competitive and challenging. It's going to be insane. Alongside rogues and or priests, be them disc or shadow. The only real downside they have is that they have a mana bar. Though with their ability to kite and CC opponents, they can often find space to drink. So let's finish up on some tier sets. Tier 4, the Aldor Regalia. The two set, no more knockback when casting Frostbolt or Fireball. In PvE, hopefully you shouldn't ever be in a position where but this overly PvP, matters. Though. Maybe it has some niche uses. The four set, a shorter cooldown on a couple of your spells. It's okay, I guess. Tier five, the Tiris Four Regalia. The two set, as we have talked about, enables a whole new playstyle to so emerge. So it depends whether or not you want to go arcane as to how much you care about this. The four set is a solid spell damage. Four set is not bad either. Which proc on crits should have decent uptime if you are blasting away as arcane does. Tier 6, the Tempest Regalia. The two set is another tick on evocation. I should have mentioned this one earlier, I suppose. It's now 60% mana, no longer affected by spirit, so you don't need to weapon swap before you do it anymore. Still, it's decent on longer fights. The four set is 5% more damage on a few of your main spells, mostly for fire. I don't know why Blizzard decided to try and go back to making arcane missiles relevant again, though. This, the two set increases duration of evocate by two seconds, is kind of like shitty it's like you get one more tick or whatever two more ticks or whatever it is but you're out of the fight longer if it was like increases the regen of evocate by five percent or something like that that would have been way more pug chimp the four set is a really nice bonus once you start hitting other tier six gear as well though so there is a little recap on mages in tbc but is it enough to answer mage is it any better now well, I think the best way I can put it is as the expansion goes on, they get better. You start off at a loss in power compared to classic overall, and that's kind of to be expected. I've called the Mage Classics unintentional hero class before, so hey, it's about time it happened. Paladins replace you as the best AoE farmers or boosters, and there are a mages lot more mages good, currently right? played in classic, classic the than I suspect there will be a demand for, and not every single ma Here's the thing, right? Mages and warriors, it's funny he pulls this up right now, mages and warriors are both insanely fucking disgustingly overpowered in classic WoW, so it's like, what do you, do you really honestly expect to go up from there? It's like, no. You're still a really good class in TBC, but you're not, like, fucking broken like you are in vanilla. Mage will be able to go full arcane and pump after tier 5 opens. As a pure damage class and whose real selling point is their damage, you just aren't offering as much as others do. What I'm saying is, Peggle. get a raid spot in a guild sooner rather than later. Oh, and for PvP though, yes, they actually somehow do improve and get better than they already are. Frost is just fantastic. That about wraps it up though. For a pure DPS class, there is a lot going on here. A very interesting look overall. Let me know if you think I missed any important bits out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening in. There it is. And I'll see you on the next one very let me, soon. Let me link that video. Really good series he's doing. Really, really good series.